What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. Now, I don't usually start my videos off completely barefaced, but today there is a very good reason for it. Today we are going to be playing with the entire Pedal Metal collection from Smashbox, which, if you're not aware, is a collaboration with the wonderful and talented Vlada MUA. Here's her lip art with a rose and the drip here. And because this collection literally has everything in it from primer all the way through to highlight, uh, there's an eyeshadow palette, there are glitter drops, there are lipsticks, there are, I believe, three different highlighters, among other things in here, a setting spray, everything. And I'm going to try to try them all. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be easy to get them all onto my face, so we're going to try, but if not, we're at least going to play with and swatch every item and then decide as we go along whether we can fit every item on my face, because there's a lot in here. Like, a lot. Like, a lot. Like, so many things. I love the way they did the entire presentation of this. I think it's so pretty. It's so Vlada. If you follow her, she, like, has this aesthetic where it's kind of, like, weird and artsy and cool, but also really feminine and pretty and simple, but eye-catching. It's just everything that this collection is is her. I also want to say before we start, first of all, congratulations to Vlada because this is a huge, huge collab and it's so awesome that she gets to do this. But I also want to disclose before we start that uh, I'm going to have a hard time not being at least a little biased because Vlada, first of all, is a fellow lip artist. Uh, she's one of the first that I ever followed. I've been inspired by her for years. And she's also been incredibly supportive and kind toward my personal work and my lip art for a while. So it's hard not to really, really, really want to love this for her. But we will do our best to be impartial and you're gonna get to see me try everything. So if I like it and you think it sucks, you're gonna know. So there's that. So I'm gonna take a second and sort everything out in like the order that I want to use it. And then we're gonna jump right into this because there's, there's a lot to go through. Okay, so the first item today is the Petal Metal Primer. This is a primer that is supposed to give you a lit from within glow. I would imagine that it's probably really similar to their Radiance Primer, which has kind of been my go-to primer lately, so I'm excited for this one. The packaging is pretty typical of the Smashbox primers, except that it has the dripping rose here. It does say on here that it is for normal to dry skin, so maybe not so great if you are oily. Uh, maybe if you're oily, go for something that's not illuminating. I don't know. I'm gonna squeeze, ooh, a little, a little fart there. Squeeze some out onto my finger. That should be enough. Should be more than enough, actually. I put a little too much. And I'm gonna just So far, that feels a lot like the Smashbox Radiance Primer. When I'm looking in the mirror, it seems like it might be slightly more radiant than their normal Radiance Primer. So uh, similar, but maybe a little bit more intense on like the dewiness that it gives you. I do like the way it makes my skin look and feel. Um, I will be combining this though with a pore filling primer in the center. I'm gonna use the Smashbox Mattify Primer. This is not a part of the collection, but I always use a mattifying pore filling primer in the center of my face in combination with whatever more moisturizing one I use on the outer parts of my face. Because one, I have combination skin, so I need different things on different parts of my face. And also because I have large pores in here and in here and between my eyebrows for some weird reason. And when you use a mattifying, pore filling type primer, it helps everything look smoother. I'm gonna pop off camera for a second and apply my foundation and brows, since those are not part of the collection, and we will then continue. This is the Petal Metal Cover Shot Eyeshadow Palette. I actually haven't even opened this up yet, so I don't even really know what the colors on the inside look like at all, but we will find out right now. I haven't seen anything about this one, actually. I've seen the highlighters everywhere. I haven't seen anybody talk about the eyeshadow palette just yet. Packaging has a little bit of a hologram on the front, which is pretty fun. I don't know if you can see it. Oh yeah, you can see it in the monitor. Yeah, there it goes. It's moving. Here it goes. Wee. This packaging is really interesting because the front is like inset into it and you lift it up with a little handle. 
That is what the inside looks like. Uh, pretty nice neutrals. We've got a nice dark brown there and a couple of matte shades. So we should be able to get like an entire eyeshadow look just out of this palette, which I always appreciate. I hate when I have to like dip into other things to make an eyeshadow palette work. Dear past Nicole, this is future Nicole talking to you from the future. Please start cleaning your brushes before you film because um, you're fucking annoying. I'm gonna start by dipping into the color Nude Rose and putting that through my crease. I don't know where I'm going with this look, but it's going to be a fairly neutral look just because of what's in the palette and also because we want to test the liquid liners as well. So I don't want it to be like overwhelming so you won't be able to get an idea of what the liners are like. It's pretty cute, pretty simple, I think. Okay, so far that's a really pretty transition shade. It had a lot of pigment and it's blending out really nicely. Seems pretty typical for a Smashbox eyeshadow. Um, it reminds me a lot of the ones that are in the little trios that they released recently, the ones that look like a lens cap. What are those called? Are those called Cover Shot 2? Hold on, let me look. It's the photo edit trios, that's the one. The matte so far reminds me of the mattes that are in these. Okay, for the inside portion of the lid, I'm going to do with a second color here, Rose Quartz. And next I'm gonna pick up the darkest shade, Coffee Blossom, on a pencil brush, and I'm gonna pack that into the outer corner of my eye. nice. Uh, they are typical Smashbox shadows. They don't feel any different than the other Smashbox shadows. So if you like the colors, I don't think that you'll have any trouble with these at all. I'm going to take one of the lightest shades up here to highlight the inner corner. I think I'm going to go with Opal Rose. Oh no, maybe I'll go with this one, Fresh Stem. This one is called Fresh Stem and I'm going to go into the inner corner with it. Brighten that shit up. Okay, so I'm gonna pop off camera in a second and conceal underneath my eyes and then finish this eyeball off. And I might run some more of that dark brown underneath the lower lashes, I'm not sure yet. So if you like Smashbox shadows in general and you like the colors in this palette, I can't see you not liking this. Uh, I don't think it's like an incredibly out there palette or uh, especially super duper unique, but it is nice. So if you're looking for something that are the, these general colors in your collection, you're not gonna be disappointed. Okay, next up we have two liquid liners. They are in the color Black Rose and 24 Carat Rose. And I wanna use both of them. So I'm going to do an ombre effect with them, I think. And I'm gonna do the Black Rose on the inside part and the 24 Carat Rose, which is a more gold, rose gold shade on the outer port of the port part of the wing. Zoom, zoom, zoom. I'll show you what both of them look like on the back of my hand before we go into the eyeballs. That is 24 Karat Rose. And that is Black Rose, which is a black base with some rose gold glitter. All right, let's make an ombre wing out of this. I just went back in and added a little bit more of that coffee blossom shadow around it because I didn't realize that I hadn't made it dark enough to make the rose gold liner kind of stand out. So I just went back in and fixed that. And now I'm gonna go in with Black Rose. Okay, this eyeliner look was a bad idea on my part. I fucked this up royally. Uh, I'm just gonna go in with Black Rose over this whole thing. You guys got to see now how 24 Carat Rose applied. I just didn't plan this look very well. It looks awful, so I'm gonna go in with black over the whole thing to make it look more acceptable. Um, so far out of the two of these, I think I like Black Rose better. Uh, 24 Carat Rose is pretty, and I think that it would be really nice in a look that like actually made sense with it, but the way I plan, I'm just a 
wow, wow, I failed at planning the way this eye look was gonna go. So I'm gonna just go over the whole thing with Black Rose. Hopefully it still performs well being like layered over itself like this, fingers crossed for me. And I'm gonna just do the Black Rose on the other side because, because wow. Okay, so I went ahead and I finished this eye and I popped on some mascara and I popped on some lashes. These are House of Lashes Juliet Lash which I think might be my new favorite lashes, by the way. You'll know if I wear them in the next 17 consecutive videos. You'll look again at the swatches on the back of my hand to get a better look at what these actually look like, because honestly, I don't think I gave them a fair chance by layering them over each other and by applying the rose gold one in a way where you couldn't even really see it. Um, I definitely will be trying these again. Even on the eye where I didn't layer them over each other, it seems like it tends to emphasize the crepiness of my eyelids, which is something that I just have. And certain liner formulas, especially ones that have a more satiny finish or even have a little bit of glitter in them, the shine of that tends to emphasize the texture. So while I do think that that's a really unique, pretty shade, and I also really like the color of this, and I like the way it looks when it's swatched here, um, I don't really necessarily think I love the way they sit on my lids. If you're one of those people who has really smooth, amazing eyelids, first of all, I hate you. I love you, but I hate you. You know what I mean? I wanna look at your eyelids all day, but I'm really jelly. But if you're one of those people, these I think will be beautiful on you. The other thing is I prefer a brush tip on an eyeliner to a felt tip on an eyeliner. These apply just fine with the felt tip, but usually felt tips get like little stringlies that hang around the edge of the liner. Um, and with a brush, you don't get that. Uh, I don't know if these will do that because I haven't used them more than one time so far, but just in general, I do prefer brushes over felt. I definitely need to play with them a little bit more before I make a decision, uh, but if I had to choose one of the two of them, I think I would choose Black Rose. Okay, I just popped off camera and added a little bit of blush and a little bit of bronzer so we can do the rest of this look. Ooh, I forgot to contour my nose, but whatever, we'll just leave it, I don't really need to. So next we have three highlighters. I'm sure you guys have seen what these highlighters look like floating around on the internet because the way they are pressed is so beautiful. There are three shades. I'll show you all of them. I'll swatch all of them really quick and then we'll decide which one we are going to wear on the face. This is the shade Rose Mantic. Look at that pressing though. I don't even want to touch this, honestly. I want to leave it on my counter in my closet where I keep my perfumes and my jewelry as a display. That's what it looks like on my finger when I dip it into the pan. And that's what it looks like swatched. This one, I don't think we're going to use because now that I see that here, that is definitely too dark for my skin. But that's a nice thing though, because that means that there is shade for people with darker skin than me, which doesn't always come into account with these things. So good job, Lada. Oh, and the outside packaging on that one looks like this. I just realized that the outside packaging on the highlighters was different, so I wanted to show you each one. This one is Prismatic Petal. That's what it looks like on the inside. Wow. That is what it looks like when I pick it up on my finger. And there it is swatched on my arm. That seemed a lot more appropriate for my skin tone than the last one. And the final color is Gilded Rose, which has the same outside packaging as the first one did. And this is what it looks like on the inside. It's just a very pretty, very classic champagne shade that has a very, very slight pinky rose shift to it. That's how it looks when I pick it up on my finger. And there it is swatched on my arm. So I think I'm gonna apply a little bit of Prismatic Pearl and then I'm going to brighten that up with Gilded Rose. And I'm also going to use Gilded Rose on places like my nose and my Cupid's bow. Oh wow, that is so much more pink on the cheek than I expected it to be, huh? And I'm going to use a little bit of Gilded Rose on the high points to brighten those up and then try that on the nose. Gilded Rose of the three is definitely the most natural highlight. So if you're looking for something that's gorgeous looking in the pan, but will give you like a really normal highlight that you can use every day, then you're gonna love that. 
Okay, next we have the Petal Metal Shimmer Drops. They look like this, you have to shake them up. They are basically little droppers of liquid glitter. There are two shades, one is Rose Glitz and one is Gold Glitz. You could use them on your cheeks to top your highlighter, you could use them over the lips, you could spread them on as like a body highlight on your collarbone. We're gonna put Gold Glitz first on my cheekbones to try to amp up the highlight a little bit more and see how that works. And then I am going to try Rose Glitz over my lips. I'm not really sure how I should go in with this. Should I put it on my finger first? Should I put it just directly onto my cheek? I'm gonna try putting it on my finger first and just dab it on and then see what happens. Okay, so far, gold glitz on the cheeks, I really, really like. Uh, I definitely think that you should put a little bit on your finger and then dab it on because it is very liquidy. It looks very, very intense, dries down immediately. So far, I'm enjoying these quite a bit. I think these might be my favorite thing from the collection so far. Now I'm gonna pick up a little bit of rose glitz and see how it looks over bare lips. It's gonna take one little drop on my finger. so pretty. So it says on the box that you could use this over a matte lipstick, which I think would look so good. But I wanted to see what it looked like on bare skin. And uh, this is the last bit of bare skin I have on my face after trying all these products today. I think that's so, so, so pretty. Okay, so far, these shimmer drops are my favorite product, not just because they look so nice, because they really do look so nice, but also I think they're like the most interesting and innovative thing we've seen in this collection so far. So liking that quite a bit. This is the Petal Metal Shimmer Spray, and I just realized that I kind of fucked up because it says here to spray it on before your makeup and then blend, which I obviously didn't do because I assumed that this was some sort of a finishing spray. So we are going to try it as a finishing spray. Um, but if it doesn't work, now we can't be mad because I did it wrong. I sprayed some on my arm and it does seem a little thick for a finishing spray, but we're gonna try it anyway because it looks very pretty on my arm. So whatever, it can't be too bad. Because it's a little on the thicker side, so like little bits of it, like like splashy bits, wind up, first of all, in, in my hair, but also just like kind of on your skin and that's why it says to blend. Um, but with that being said, that doesn't look terrible. It just kind of adds more shimmer to the whole situation, although we have a ton of shimmer on anyway already. So unfortunately, I didn't really give this a fair try now and that really sucks. Um, but. What I can do is, you know, let you guys know on my Insta stories and keep you posted throughout the week and try this before makeup because that way I could try it without the primer and like use those two things separately anyway. So yeah, sorry I goofed, but also I will keep you posted and it smells really nice and the packaging's delightful. So that's where we're at with this. Finally in this collection are the six liquid lipsticks. Three of them are the always on liquid lipstick metallic formula. And three of them are the metallic version of the Be Legendary formula. I have reviewed both of these formulas on this channel before. I'll put cards on the screen if you wanna go watch those reviews. And I think there's a swatch video of one of the full collections too, if I'm not mistaken. I can't even keep track anymore of what I've swatched. <laughs> The always on liquid lipsticks are a traditional liquid lip. So that is a liquid that dries down and stays on, doesn't move. And the Be Legendary formula is like a very thick lip lacquer. Um, it is a, like a melted down lipstick sort of a formula. It looks very glassy and glossy on the lips, but it doesn't dry down and it's not transfer proof. So it's a liquid lipstick, but not in the same sense as these liquid lipsticks. It's, it's glossy different, more juicy. So I'm not gonna go too in depth on the formulas of these and a review of that because I have spoken about those at length before. Both of them I do like, I wear them all the time. So we are just going to do swatches of all six.
Okay, so we got through all of the products. I didn't get them all on my face at the same time. I think that was a little bit unrealistic of me to even think that that was possible. We did get to try everything in one capacity or another, and I have some thoughts. I have some thoughts. So the Petal Metal Primer, uh, that retails for $39. If you like the Smashbox Radiance Primer, then I think that you are very likely going to like this. It's very similar, except that it's a little bit more pink and it has a little bit more of a radiant finish than the original Radiance Primer from Smashbox. The Covershot Petal Metal Eyeshadow Palette very, very pretty shadows, very typical for the Smashbox formula. If you like the Smashbox eyeshadow formula in general, you are going to like it. Also think that it is nice and complete, so you can get a nice complete look out of it. It is, however, just, you know, a neutral palette. It has some more interesting tones in it because a lot of the, like, shimmer shades have a little bit of a pink shift to them, which makes it more interesting. So if you're looking for a neutral palette that's good quality and might be slightly, slightly different than things you already own, but not completely out of the box, and I think you'll like it. And that retails for $29, which is pretty good price. That's kind of a bargain. The Petal Metal Liquid Eyeliners. Um, I honestly think that I need to spend some more time trying them because just the whole look that I had going on today didn't really work out the way I wanted it to. And so I don't really feel like I got a proper first impression of them. Um, I do know that the eye that I didn't layer them on looks a lot nicer, uh, but I would like to give the 24 karat rose one more of a try on its own. So I'll use that further and let you guys know both on Instagram and in an updated video if I use them again in a video what I think. Uh, out of everything though, they were the ones that I was like the least excited about. The Petal Metal Shimmer Drops are so pretty. I think these are my favorite, favorite thing out of the whole collection, just because they are something different. They are something so interesting. They look beautiful in the packaging and they also perform really nicely. I don't know how they wear over time, but I love the formula in the sense that it's like really, really, really thin and watery. So when you put it on your skin, you just get that shimmer and it dries down immediately. And then it feels like there's nothing on your skin. So I like that a lot. I'm definitely going to play with them a lot more throughout the week. I try them over some matte liquid lipsticks. I feel like they would look so good over like maybe a dark liquid lipstick or something. And I really like them as a highlight as well. The shimmer spray, we obviously didn't get to try that properly. Uh, didn't even realize it until it was way too late. Uh, it smells really nice and it feels really nice when I sprayed it on my arm on bare skin. It does have a good amount of shimmer in it, but it's not enough shimmer that I would think that it would show through foundation. I think from playing with it a little bit that that would be something that if you're looking for something that's like maybe a less intense version of like the Fenty Body Lava because it does say that you could spray it on the body as well. Like if you're looking for like a body glow that's a little bit more subtle and like not sticky like the Body Lava, then that might be something that would really appeal to you. Um, I'm not sure if I would buy it just to prep my skin for makeup because I would already be using a radiant primer. So I don't know that it's necessary, but as like a spray for your collarbone, even for your arms or legs, or to kind of prep your skin to add like a little bit of a dewy highlight over like maybe a bare skin look with just some concealer. I can see it being really nice and it has a nice light floral scent to it. So it is nice, but the, the jury's still out on that one. As far as the liquid lipsticks are concerned, like I said, they're both formulas that I already knew that I liked a lot. But as far as which colors I like the most, in the Be Legendary one, which is the one that stays glossy, I really like the color Rose Magic. And in the Always On liquid lipsticks, uh, the one that I really liked the most was Desert Rose. And the highlighters, personally, I think that the way these highlighters are poured is so unique and so pretty that I would buy them personally just for that. Like no joke, just to have them in my collection because they're so pretty to look at. I think the one that I tried that was like more special of the two was definitely Prismatic Petal. That was the one that had the really strong pink shift in it. 
I think that the way it looks in the pan and the way it goes onto the skin are really unexpected and they're not like anything else that I own and I think that alone makes it my favorite. But if you're looking for something that has this pressing, this packaging, this overall like look and experience and you want something that's more everyday, then Gilded Rose would be the way to go. And if you have a slightly deeper skin tone, you could also get that same effect as Gilded Rose with Rose Mantic, although it's definitely more on the pinky side than Gilded Rose is. Uh, I think it'll look really nice on deeper skin tones and give you more of a classic highlighter look than the Prismatic Petal one, which is a little bit more adventurous. Overall though, the way these look on the skin is very, very nice and I don't think that it'll be disappointed. It's just, you should know what you're looking for going into it. As of right now, if I had to pick one must have item that I think is like the most interesting, the most special out of this collection, I would say the shimmer drops. Those are to me, just because they're innovative and different and they performed really nicely and they're beautiful in the packaging and the packaging itself is beautiful too. Uh, I think those are my takeaway as like my favorite thing here. Second would be the highlighters because that pressing is just stunning and the prismatic shade was just woo woo woo. And the one thing that I might skip if I had to pick one to skip would be the liquid eyeliner, but I am going to keep trying them for the rest of the week and see if I can get a little bit of a better result with them because part of it was user error for sure. Whew, that was a lot of makeup trying. I tried ooh, so many things just now. Goddamn, my brain is a little bit fried. So that being said, I think that's all for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please let me know what you thought. What do you think of these items? Which would you choose out of this whole collection if you could? Please do not forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe if you haven't already because I would love to have you stick around. Don't forget to follow me on other social media. I am at Ms. Quinface pretty much across the board. Instagram and Twitter are my favorite platforms. Come find me over there. I think that's all I have to say. I think I wore my battery out on my camera, so we gotta go, and I will see you in the next one.